Okay, so the stupidity begins with the NFL. Everybody's trying to blame Trump for the advent of the stupidity. Now, Trump has his own brand of silliness that he has injected in here. And I actually don't think it's politically silly. I think it's bad for the country, but I think it's politically smart. But we need to start off with a simple fact. The NFL politicized itself years ago. This idea that Trump politicized the NFL is sheer nonsense. It's just not true. The NFL made a conscious decision to allow politics on the field. Okay, they've done this for years. In 2014, you recall after the Michael Brown shooting in Ferguson, Missouri, the St. Louis Rams came out on the field and did the infamous hands up, don't shoot pose as they were coming out of the tunnel onto the field. Big deal at the time. Did they get fined? They did not get fined. It was nothing from the end. The NFL was fine with it. No problem. Okay, then in 2016, Colin Kaepernick decided that he was going to kneel down for the national anthem on this, during a preseason game. Did the NFL find him? No, they did nothing. But what did the NFL do? They threatened the Dallas Cowboys with fines if they wore police decals in the regular season on their helmets after there was that shooting of police officers by a Black Lives Matter associated radical in, uh, in 2016. So, you, so here's the headline. If you had the decal on your helmet, they would not allow you to wear the decal on your helmet. Okay, same year. If you wanted to wear cleats that, that paid homage to, to victims of 9-11, the NFL said you were not allowed to do this. Some players did it anyway, and then the NFL ended up waiving the fine. But if you wore even, if you wore even special breast cancer gear, then the NFL threatened to find you. If you did a, an end zone dance that was too provocative, the, the NFL fined you. So the NFL cracked down on everything except for leftist political expression. Everything except for leftist political expression. I assume that, you know, the, the response would be, well, they didn't crack down on Tim Tebow, except that Tim Tebow kneeling to do his own private prayer is not really a political presentation. Kneeling for the national anthem pretty clearly is. So the NFL had politicized itself long ago. And then President Trump decided to step in. So let's be clear about something. There was a consensus until the middle of last week, until Wednesday of last week, when last we left our story, there was a consensus in the United States. Kneeling for the national anthem is a stupid thing to do. It is an unpatriotic thing to do. This was the general American consensus. Now, there were some people who said, well, it's still patriotic to kneel for the anthem because you're really trying to say that the anthem isn't being fulfilled in the way that it was meant to be fulfilled. Okay, you made the statement about the anthem. The anthem is one of the few unifying features of American life. The, the American flag, the national anthem, these are unifying features of American life. And to kneel for the anthem suggests that you are anti-American. Okay, it does. There are plenty of ways to protest against police brutality or systemic racism if these are things that you feel the necessity to do. Listen, I think that you're wrong. I think that you are, you are operating on faulty assumptions. According to the Washington Post, there have been 761 police shootings this year. Nine of them, nine of them were of an unarmed black person. And of those nine, not all nine were cases in which the person was just sitting around doing nothing. In many cases, there's questionable there are serious questions about confrontations with the police. So the idea that cops are going around shooting people is in and of itself ridiculous, that they're going around shooting people based on race. Not a lot of evidence to support that. That said, if you want to protest, there are plenty of ways to protest. Making the specific statement that you're going to bow down during the national anthem on national TV, it's a statement. It's a political statement, and it says that America is inherently steeped in racism, founded in racism, and inescapably tied to racism. Okay, that's what that says. So Americans didn't like that. If you look at the polls, Americans didn't like this, and it was actually hurting the NFL's ratings. The NFL had a, a trio of serious PR problems before the middle of last week. The NFL had the CTE scandal. You know, the fact that if you get hit in the head many times, then you are likely to end up, or it's possible that you end up with brain damage. That could end with early death. CTE uh, is, a, is a brain disease in which you get plaque in your brain, essentially, and that comes from too many hits to the head. Uh, so that was one thing the NFL had to deal with. Uh, the NFL also had to deal with a serious spate of domestic violence incidents where a bunch of their players were knocking around women. And the NFL, you recall this with Ray Rice, the NFL didn't know what to do. They sort of said that they were going to do something, then they didn't do anything, and then they did something again. So that was the second thing. And then they had the Kaepernick thing. All of this was contributing to a drop in ratings for the NFL. And in fact, J.D. Power did a poll, and it showed that for whatever number of people were not watching the NFL anymore who had watched before, 26% of those people said that their number one reason for turning off the NFL was the national anthem protests. They didn't like the politicization of sport, which makes sense. We have to have a water cooler culture. We have to have something in common. We don't have politics in common. We don't have church in common. We don't even have entertainment in common, but sports seemed like a pretty easy one, right? A bunch of people run around after a ball. How do you screw that up? Well, we found a way to screw it up. So the NFL was facing all of these problems. So there was a consensus. The consensus was people like Colin Kaepernick, adults doing stupid things, not good for the country. But should Colin Kaepernick be fired because of that? Probably not. Most people didn't really feel like it was necessary to call for a firing. Didn't really feel like it was 
important to to call for a firing, or if the owners wanted to fire on their own recognizance, that's their that's their problem. I mean, right? They, it's a private business. If they want to fire Kaepernick, they can fire Kaepernick. That's their call. What it is not is the government's job to get involved. The government should not be involved in this. Now, the reason those of us on the right thought this is because we don't like when the government or government actors sound off on these issues generally. Right? How would we feel if President Obama had said about Brendan Eich, the former CEO of Mozilla, that it's a good thing that Mozilla fired him. After all, the guy was for, it was for traditional marriage. I mean, that's pretty discriminatory. We would have all been fighting mad. We would have said, what business uh, is it of the president of the United States to make noises about that? Imagine for a second the counterfactual. Let's say Tim Tebow gets down on a knee, but he doesn't just get down on a knee to pray. He gets down on a knee because he is overtly protesting the abortion culture in the United States. And let's say that Barack Obama is the president. He comes out and he says, that's inappropriate. Sports is sports. Cut that stuff out. I hope Tim Tebow gets fired. Somebody needs to fire Tim Tebow. Let's boycott the NFL until Tim Tebow is fired. We all would have said, wait a second. Is that the job of the president? Like, it's our job to decide whether or not we want to watch a game. It's the owner's job to decide whether or not somebody gets fired. So this was the consensus. Stupid politics are stupid. And also, it's the owner's job and the patron's job to decide whether they want to watch something or fire somebody. This was the consensus. It was pretty well settled. You weren't seeing a significant increase in the number of NFL players who were kneeling for the anthem. It was basically Colin Kaepernick, and now it's not even Kaepernick because the guy doesn't have a job because he's a crappy quarterback. So that is the lead up. Then along comes President Trump. Now, I'm not sure that what President Trump did last week was politically designed. I'm not sure that he meant to, to start this firefight. I think that Trump likes to say things to audiences where they clap. Right? I think that that's really as deep as it goes for President Trump. But the effect of what President Trump does is that President Trump, whether he likes it or not, basically, no matter what he says, it's going to be taken the same way that reverse psychology is taken with my three-year-old. So the way that I get my three-year-old to, to eat her food is I say to her, sweetheart, you're not big. No, you're not big enough to eat all that food. You can't eat all that food. No way. And then she goes, yes, I can. I'm a big girl. And then she eats all her food, right? Well, no matter what Trump says, the left responds like three-year-olds. So whatever Trump says, they immediately respond with, you say we shouldn't kneel for the anthem? Not only will we kneel for the anthem, we'll stretch during the anthem. Not only will we kneel for the anthem, we'll poop on the field. That's what we'll do, just to show you, because Trump, huh, huh? Okay, so Trump leads all this off with statements that really are divisive and not useful. Okay, so here's the part of what Trump says that's, that's useful. What he says that's useful is kneeling for the national anthem is stupid. Agree. Everyone agrees. But that's not enough. Trump goes further. He gets back into his full-on WWE TV persona, and he decides that he's going to call for people to be fired. Right? He's going to go, you're fired. He's even going to bring out his old slogan because he's not getting anything done legislatively, and everybody's sort of disappointed in him, and people are sort of frustrated. So he's going to bring back an applause line in Alabama because whenever he gets in front of a crowd, this is what he does. Trump is a consummate performer. It's what he does for a living. He's not president for a living. He's a performer for a living who happens to be president. That's how he got here. He didn't get here through great legislative leisure domain. That's not how he got here. Now I'm going I'm to play the tape of Trump and explain what happens next in just a second. President Trump. So President Trump goes to Alabama, and it's a rally, and he decides that it's time to drop some red meat. So here is President Trump dropping the red meat. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! Yeah! More roaring! Yeah! Okay, so, the, the, the him condemning the, the players who kneel, I'm fine with that. I've been doing it for years now. I think most people in the United States have been doing it for years. He is the president of the United States. He is not a Breitbart commenter. He is not the local drunk at your pub. Okay, he's the president of the United States. And now it's time for the president to be the president. Perfectly fine for him to say, people should not kneel for the national anthem. It destroys a feeling of unity that America is built upon. We all strive to do better. Not okay for the president of the United States to say, the owners should move to fire people. And that's not where Trump stops. So Trump goes to Twitter, and he unleashes a full-on Hurricane 5-level tweet storm. So here's what he tweets. If a player wants the privilege of making millions of dollars in the NFL or other leagues, he or she should not be allowed to disrespect our great American flag or country and should stand for the national anthem. If not, you fire! <laughs> Find something else to do. Okay, so here is the problem. There are a couple of words here to start that are a problem. One, allowed. Right, go back to that first tweet for a second. Allowed. Okay, so in that first tweet, should not be allowed. By whom? By whom? Okay, the NFL gets to make its own rules. If they decide they want to let these dolts be dolts, that's their problem. 
But this allowed coming from the president of the United States carries the patina of government action. Trump probably doesn't mean that. Okay, Trump doesn't even have the power to get a health care bill passed. But this is not the kind of stuff that the president of the United States should be saying. And then when he says that they should be fired, again, I ask you, if the situation reversed, take off your, take off your partisan hat for a moment. If he had said, no one should be allowed to kneel against our great American law, Roe v. Wade, if not, you're fired, how would you feel about that? And if you say you'd feel fine about that, you're lying. Okay, and here is President Trump continuing along these lines. And then he tweets, Roger Goodell of NFL just put out a statement trying to justify the total disrespect certain players show to our country. Tell them to stand. Okay, like, look, I, this part I don't have a problem with. Okay, Roger Goodell, you know, he, again, private industry. I don't think the president of the United States should be saying this. I agree with the general sentiment. Again, there's a difference between when I say it or you say it, and the president says it because he has a different role in the American Republic. This is not something the president should be doing. Okay. Then he, then he continues. Again, he just can't let this thing go because he thinks he's got a winner here. And he does. Okay, here's the, uh, the irony. The irony is that Trump does have a winner here. So Trump says, if NFL fans refuse to go to games until players stop disrespecting our flag and country, you'll see change take place fast. Fire or suspend. So now he's openly calling for people to boycott a particular business until they suspend or fire someone. Imagine if Barack Obama said, everyone should stop patronizing Chick-fil-A until the owner of the business is moved out of power. Would that be okay? The answer is no. And then he says, NFL attendance and ratings are way down. Boring games, yes, but many stay away because they love our country. Leagues should back U.S. Again, it's just more and more of the same. He feels like he's, he's a terrier with a, with a bone, and now he's not going to let it go. And he continues along these lines. It just never ends. Great solidarity for our national anthem and for our country. Standing with locked arms is good. Kneeling is not acceptable. Bad ratings. Okay, I don't know if that was translated into North Korean and then uh, into Korean and then back into English, but in any case... When he says here, you know, I, I actually, here's what I suggested. I said, listen, if you want to show solidarity with the people who are kneeling, but you disagree with them, then put your hand on their shoulder or something. And then say after the game, I disagree with him, but it's his right to say what he wants to say, and that's America. Uh, the, Trump, I think, is sort of trying to say the same thing there, but okay. Then he says, courageous patriots have fought and died for a great American flag. We must honor and respect it. Make America great again. And then the choir starts singing. Okay, so I agree. I agree with all of this. I agree with all of this. But again... He's the president. I am a talk show host. Okay, there's a difference. Uh, is that the, is that the, the finale of, of his great rant? I think that's the finale, finale of his great rant. Then, that's not all. He sends his Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, to go out and comment on this too. Again, why is the president involved in telling private businesses what to do? Okay, as a conservative, I want the government less involved in telling private businesses what to do. Even if I disagree with what a business is doing, there are plenty of businesses that I think are full of schmucks. That doesn't mean that as the president of the United States, I get to tell them what to do. So again, Two things can be true at once. You should not kneel for the anthem. It makes you an a-hole. Two, as the president of the United States, you should, not going, you should not go around telling other businesses to fire people based on political predilection. Okay, this makes you malfeasant in your duty. Okay, so here is Steve Mnuchin, a guy most famous recently for using taxpayers' dollars so he can take his wife on their honeymoon or something. Here's Steve Mnuchin explaining why, why Trump is right to Jake Tapper on CNN. The NFL has all different types of rules. You can't have stickers on your helmet. You have to have your uniforms tucked in. What the president is saying, and I think the owners should meet, and they should vote on a rule. This is about respect for our military. This is about respect for our first responders. This is not about Republicans or Democrats. Players have the right for free speech off the field. On the field, this is about respect for lots of people. And I don't understand why there's rules that when the Dallas Cowboys wanted to put stickers on their helmets out of respect for people there, they couldn't do it. Okay, but I agree with the all NFL the things that he's saying, saying right now. Why is the Treasury Secretary of the United States commenting on this? Why? Okay, we complained when Barack Obama and his, and his government got involved in trying to regulate the name of the Washington Redskins. And we said, why are you talking about this? Go do your stupid job, you stupid. Okay, and now everybody's talking about, okay, so why is this really happening? It's because Trump's actually doing something quite clever. Okay, whether he means to or not, what he's doing right now is quite clever. What he is doing is he is saying, I am on the side. I, right here, I'm on the side of the national anthem and the flag. I love it. It's great. And then he knows the Democrats are going to respond like three-year-old children and say, yeah, well, you like the flag? You like the anthem? Well, screw you. I hate the anthem. I hate the flag. <laughs> and that's exactly what Democrats do. Okay, naturally, this is exactly where Democrats go because they just can't help themselves. So here's a former Maryland Democratic representative saying that all NFL players should kneel in response to Trump. 
right? She said, Sunday, I hope every NFL player takes a knee in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick against the white supremacist who squats in our White House. So what happens? A lot of the NFL players do. They decide that they hate Trump so much they're going to kneel for the anthem. So here's what the left sees and here's what the right sees. Because we now live in completely different bubbles, right? We don't have conversations with each other. We don't talk with each other. We don't try to stand, understand each other. So here's what the left sees. The left sees a bunch of people kneeling to protest a president of the United States making statements that are beyond his ken. Right? The president should not be commenting on this. So let's all kneel in solidarity to show that we don't like what the president said. Here's what the rest of America sees. They see a bunch of people kneeling during the national anthem that people have fought and died to protect. They see a bunch of people disrespecting the flag that a bunch of people have fought and died to respect. So what the left did is they took an unpopular protest movement, a, a, a protest movement that no one on the left was seriously backing, and then they made it their, they made it their rallying cry. This is what we're going to rally around now is this unpopular, stupid thing. And Trump's standing over here going, I love the flag. It's great. Look at all these people kneeling. It's not about me. They hate the flag. They hate the national anthem. Meh. Right. And it's, it's so everyone. So the, the real debate here is not even had. The real debate is whether it's appropriate to kneel for the flag. Half the people kneeling about the flag and national anthem are doing it specifically to piss off Trump. If you think you're pissing off Trump, you're wrong. OK, Trump is winning because of this. You think you can win back Ohio and Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin by kneeling during the national anthem? Are you out of your mind? But the Democrats think they're going to win with their base. Trump thinks he's going to win with his base. And they're both sort of right. They're both sort of right. So what breaks down? The only thing that breaks down is our capacity to speak with one another. Americans are the ones who get hurt, right? We just want to be, watch our football and drink a beer and be left alone. That's all. It's all we ask. Is it so much? I've been saying this about sports for years. I was saying this when the NFL was trotting out Beyonce to do a Black Lives Matter routine during halftime. 